Hi, I'm Stacy with Kids Learning for Life, and today I'm going to give you a curriculum flip through of the Primary Mathematics Standards Edition, levels 1 through 3. Primary Mathematics is a simple and easy way to teach your children math. Each grade level comes with a textbook, a workbook, a teacher's manual, and the test booklet. Each year is separated out by semester, so the 3A being third grade, first semester, and the 3B being third grade, second semester. The, all of the corresponding materials, the workbooks, textbooks, and even the tests and the teacher's manual are all separated out into a 3A and a 3B, or a 1A and a 1B, depending on what level you're on. This curriculum is mainly mastery based, meaning that they cover one topic and then they don't necessarily go back to that topic later on in the book. The one time they do review different topics is in their review sections. So I do like that even though it's mastery based, I do get to have those reviews which do review all of the different concepts taught before. Because it's so open and go friendly, it's very simple to follow. You open up the textbook, you read through the lesson, it'll tell you right at the bottom of the page, stop here, go do lessons, exercise one and two in the workbook, you go do those and then you're done and then you can come back the next day. Now that you have a general overview, let's go ahead and look through these, shall we? All right, first we're gonna take a look at the first grade level for 1A and 1B. So each of them have a textbook along with a corresponding workbook. So how each of these works is you start with the textbook and then you're going to have the table of contents. So this tells you what is gonna be taught in this 1A book. And then it jumps straight into the lesson. So you would talk about how to count and you would teach your child, you know, count these penguins, count these frogs, and make sure that they are comfortable with being able to count to 10. And then you're gonna move on, you know, let's count some more, just have them count. And then down here, this is where we want to pause. So every time you get to a pencil, you're going to stop and then it gives you a corresponding exercise. So here's exercise one and two, pages seven through 10. So then you're going to jump over to the corresponding workbook and go into exercises one. My kid had some fun with this one. So you're gonna start with exercise one, they do the matching and then you can go on to the next one. One other thing I like is they do have a table of contents here that breaks down exactly how many exercises are in each section. So I'm gonna just kind of flip through here so you can see that a little better. So length, there's three exercises, three in weight, and two in capacity. And then all of the exercises again are labeled with the exercise at the top and then you can complete it and if you're ever confused, you just go back to the textbook and kind of review the material again with your child. Let's give you a few more. Okay, and just briefly, 1B is essentially the same thing. What I am gonna show you is just the table of contents so you can see what is covered. And then just a brief view of what you start to be introduced to and Again, noticing when you see those pencils means you stop and jump over to the workbook. The 1B workbook, jumping over to that table of contents so you can really see it's actually a lot of lessons. So each corresponding lesson. And again, noticing those reviews. So at the end of each section, they typically have a review. Um, maybe not each section as we can see, but after a couple sections. So I don't purchase the test booklets at all, or the teacher's manual, by the way. Um, I can't remember if I said that or not, but I use these reviews as um, the tests. So I have my child, I try to do very, very, very minimal help with the reviews so that my ch I know if my child is understanding the material and if there is anywhere that I need to go back and fill in any gaps. Now for a quick flip through of 2A and 2B. So here's the table of contents for 2A. 
And then again, the content does not change all that much. Same quality of the information, of the graphics. Again, looking for those pencils to guide you when to move into the worksheet. And then to give you a look at the table of contents for the 2A book, workbook. Sorry, that's written on. <laughs> and then just flipping through, kind of here's some of the exercises. There's a lot of practice with word problems, as you can see. So I do love that as well. Here is the table of contents for 2B. And then a couple of the exercises, or sorry, the lessons. They do in the 2B, they start having this practice page. And I only have used it if I really feel like my kid um, needs the extra practice. Otherwise, I just have them jump straight to the lesson. So I kind of use this as their practice and then this only if they need it. Getting into some time, measurement, money. And then let's hop over to the workbook for 2B. Here's that table of contents. And then the exercises. More word problems. The last one we're gonna look at today is our 3A and 3B. So here's the table of contents for 3A and definitely moving in to a lot more into that thousands place. And they've changed up the look of the pencil, not that that matters, but just a, just a note, doing some place value, working on some of that mental, ad, mental math. Again with these, here's like another review, I only use these if I feel like my student needs the extra review. Otherwise, they just move straight into the exercises from the workbook. So here's the table of contents for the workbook 3A. And then some of the lesson examples. They, I love, they do have a wide variety of different types of lessons. It's not just like the same worksheet over and over again. They really have different little stories here. We've got, you know, someone digging for treasure. Um, occasionally they'll have a little joke. Um, if I find one, I'll let, oh, here was one, you know, what tables do we eat? Vegetables, veggie tables, however you want to say it. Um, so depending on what they did, they have to put the letter down here and my kids get a kick out of it every once in a while. Here's the 3B textbook. Here's the table of contents for 3B. Wow, this book is so new. I haven't used it yet this year. <laughs> so some of the content. More practice pages, lots of review pages. So just, you know, to note, these practices and reviews do not correlate to anything in the um, workbooks. The workbooks are completely separate from these separate practice pages. So here you're supposed to go to exercise five and you can come here for more practice. And so they could do it on a separate sheet of paper. Um, I just wanna be clear, those are not, those questions are not also in the workbook. They are only in the textbook. Some word problems. And lastly, the 3B workbook. Here's the table of contents. And then some of those exercises. So it's very simple to follow, very easy. You just go through the textbook, jump over the workbook, and you're good to go. 
So overall, what I've noticed with this curriculum is, again, it's mastery based and it's very, it focuses on mental math. So the very beginning of the book, um, in level one, it's preparing children to be able to do things mentally. It breaks numbers apart, teaches you little tricks to be able to do math as quickly in your head as possible. Now, having three children going through these books, I can tell you that I have um, just barely started the 1A with my youngest, but my other two are very different learners. So it's actually really interesting. My oldest is very good at that mental math and can really see numbers in his head, while my second child really needs me to pull out as many manipulatives, manipulatives as possible to be able to show him this is what 10 looks like, this is what 12 looks like, this is how you break it apart into tens and ones. So it is focused on that mental math. So some children that are better at visualizing in their head will have an easier time with this curriculum. Overall, I would rate this curriculum four out of five stars. The four stars is only because it's not going to be the perfect math curriculum for every learner. Again, I'm finding that, you know, one of my children is struggling a little bit more than the other, not able to not complete it, like he can still work through it, but the way he thinks differently, I have to adapt it slightly more than I ever did with my first child. Now, is this necessarily the curriculum's fault? No. Um, I have not de um, delved that deep into other curriculums. I know there's a bunch of others, like maybe Matthew C. I've heard of, and uh, that would maybe be better for my second child. So that's kind of one thing I'm going to be looking at over the coming year to see if he's starting to get the math with primary mathematics or if he starts falling back a little. So far, I haven't noticed any falling backwards, so we're gonna keep on moving on, but definitely always something I like to encourage people to think about just because a curriculum is working great for you now or even working great for one child doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only curriculum you should ever use. Um, it's kind of the beauty with homeschool. If something's not working for one or all of your children, please feel free to find something else. As long as you've given the first one a good hard try, you know, at least eight weeks of following the directions, then there's no harm in just saying, you know, this curriculum's not working right for us. Let's go ahead and move on. Have you used primary mathematics before? Have you used the standards, the original, or the common core edition? Let me know in the comments below, because I would love to know what the difference is between the three. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe to get more homeschool content just like this. See you next time.